Not until yet. Nine o'clock. Well, I don't know if you want to say what you want. Did it start okay? Yeah, you didn't say. I'm still not seeing it. So, I think it's okay for that day because it doesn't seem like there's Yeah, we don't have, a lot of people don't immediately issue about those. No, right? I, I, there's, there's one small guy that gets one out there. I knew the name of it, I can tell you it's mine. Would you want to find out the name? Yeah, I want to have the name. The name of the name of the name of the name of the location. We probably should provide that to you anyway. I give that, give that to you anyway, so you can put it in the log. Road, road abandonment is just too generic. They should say road abandonment. Oh, yeah. Avenue 462. Right. I, had to, I told him I was going to ask my oh. supervisor if we could put another one on there because there's two on there already. Okay. Okay. You can pause it if you want. And time? I never saw it, Jenny. How long? It's 9 o'clock and we have 15 minutes. Oh, that long? Okay. All right. That long? <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just extemporaneizing. So we'll, we'll see how long. Okay. Thank you.
Yes. to show you which buttons to push. <laughs> Supervisor Ennis, do they have you pinned in the corner, sir? <laughs> yeah. I think he had them pinned in the corner. <laughs> I was just sitting here waiting Sorry. for you. And I Sorry, didn't, Madam Chair. Sorry. I didn't know they had you uh, under lock and key over there. Sorry. <laughs> Well, good morning and welcome to the September 23rd, 2008 meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. Uh, please join the board and I as we salute the flag and then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, good morning, all. Um, uh, our first agenda item this morning is a presentation from Health and Human Service Agency regarding an overview of the Tulare County Children's Services Network. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the uh, Board of Supervisors. Uh, for the record, my name is Donnie Griffin, HHSA Human Services. And uh, I have the pleasure of introducing the chairman of the Tulare uh, Children's Services Network, Karen Cooper. You all know Karen Cooper very well. She's about, uh, what, 20 years, executive director of um, the um, Family Services of Tulare County and the Visalia Chamber of Commerce Woman of the Year. I'm standing Ooh. right here. <laughs> so with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Karen to you. <laughs> Thank you, because most of us don't know uh, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> good morning, Karen. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Conway, Supervisors. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, for you to give us a moment of your time so that we can tell you about our really exciting efforts to work together to support and improve services to children and families in Tulare County. Um, I do have a little picture show. On and we worked um, for the last several months, actually a year, to come to really develop really cool. our um, vision and mission. But before we um, talk about that, I just want to mention that children's services networks or similar collaboratives exist in counties all over California. In Kern County, they've had a children's services network for 17 years. 
And we have had former efforts to bring people together in collaboration, but they've never taken off in a really, really in, um, effective way. And I think this time we have more than taken off. Um, people use analogies sometimes to describe uh, collaborations of people, and oftentimes I hear the analogy of an umbrella. And I'm not really, it, it doesn't really strike me because I just see this big umbrella and people standing still underneath it and trying to be protected from things that are, you know, pelting them. And I would prefer to think of our network as, as, a, as a big pot or an ola uh, that's sitting on a stove, you know, just kind of bubbling away. And, and the, it's the heat that gives the chemicals to, to get things moving. And that's really what has happened with our network. You know, we've gotten things moving. And it's really important to have all those ingredients in that pot so you cook up something great, something that's better than the composition of its parts. Um, we don't really, and I really have to thank at this point um, John Davis because even though he's not standing over the pot stirring it in, by any means, in fact, he tries to like hide at the bottom, um, uh, <laughs> He, he was, <clears throat> for whatever that means, he, he was responsible in the beginning for the leadership that was necessary to make sure all the necessary ingredients were there. When collaborations don't work, it's because people just don't show up. You know, you have to have all the key ingredients. And he committed his leadership to making sure those ingredients were there. Um, and now we've been together long enough that we're blending, and we see on this list some of the multidisciplinary network we have, which is countywide. It's representatives from county departments. Many of them are here um, in support, representing them. Janet Honado from probation. Uh, I can't even see everybody, but um, I see another hider in the back from, from uh, um, child, child care. Raise your hand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just um, blanking out at the moment because I'm 60 now, and um, <laughs> and we have and we have representatives from all of the uh, nonprofits, the family resource centers, from education, and it is bringing us together. And as you can see, child welfare, mental health, health, and when we come. The important piece that makes this pot really bubble and activities happen is that we don't come just wearing the hat of our own organization. We come with a vision on children and that's and, and a vision on the county and a vision on families and we represent we think in terms of, we think globally, we think big picture, we think how do we improve things for children and families, how do we improve systems, how do we improve policies. So we developed over this last year with the support of um, uh, first five, we developed a strategic plan, which you have a copy of. It's also on our website, and most of what I'm going to present to you is on our website, so you can visit that again. And in our strategic plan, we laid out our mission and our vision and our guiding principles. And definitely our vision is collaboration and coordination. And in, in leaving behind this image of um, how we operate, you know, kind of bubbling in our pot. I do want to say that I personally am the big ripe tomato, and um, I have <laughs> ideas of who everybody else is, but I'll tell you that later. So, um, in our strategic plan, and I think if we move here forward, uh, one of the things that we do as a collaborative is we really try and focus on what are the key emerging needs in our county. You know, we're all so used, how many times have we heard, why doesn't somebody do something about, or when are they going to, or, you know, you all hear that all the time, because that's what people do. They come up to you and say, how come you, or how come somebody hasn't, you know. Well, the point is, is that people just have to step forward and be doers. And in order to be doers, you have to first focus on what things need to be done the most. So the job of the uh, network is not to do everything as a network, but it's, to, but it's to use that activity within our, as we bubble together, to identify what are some of the key issues. And then to bring our focus and, and resources to trying to move those forward. So we have committees just dedicated to that, dedicated to identifying what are the biggest needs for children and families in our counties. One of our first areas that we focused on is um, uh, actually an initiative that's a statewide initiative. We had nothing to do with its existence called Wraparound. You've heard all about it before. But it wasn't really going in Tulare County. And the Children's Services Network 
um, brought people together, we focused on it, we said this is something that needs to happen. And wraparound is just another nice analogy word for an approach to helping some of the children and really adolescents that are most difficult, that are most in need, those that are sent out of county to high level homes because their problems um, are beyond some of the resources here. And so the idea of wraparound is to provide just kind of whatever it takes to keep these children back in their families. Um, and it had to be organized in our county and that was one of the things that we focused on. We've also given support and are very, very involved with the reform and the um, really Im expansion improvement, not expansion, but um, systems improvement within child welfare services. And all of the um, efforts that go on needs, need a body that they can bounce things off of. And that's what a children's services network does. It gives, it gives, um, it listens and it gives feedback based on all of our collective experiences and participates in, in these kinds of countywide efforts. And so one of the things that's going on in child welfare reform is called differential response. Again, I won't go on about that, but it just means such a simple idea. Instead of just doing one thing, you get to choose different things. So that's differential response. Instead of just taking kids out of a home and putting them in foster care, maybe you use another approach, like providing some support services in the home before things get so bad that a child has to be taken out and put in a really expensive alternative care environment. Um, in addition to that, another area that we were focused on as being a high need in our county is drug exposed infants. Uh, you, in your package you have a, a um, the material that was produced by the Tulare County Health and Human Services Agency under the Maternal and Child Health Director, Kathy Volpa, and it gives a, a lot of information about drug exposed infants. They did a great conference and this was in supported by the training arm of the Children's Services Network because one of our other reasons for being is to provide quality training and to provide systems capacity development to our membership. You know, we live here, we got a there's, we can't just get on a Southwest airplane for $57 and fly to training in LA and San Francisco like some of our buddies get to do. You know, we have to go the hard way up 99 or down 99. So we've decided that we should bring training to us. And we have done that and brought some really quality training through the Children's Services Network that benefit all of our providers throughout the county that don't have the resources to go to these, these types of expensive trainings elsewhere. Um, oh, let's see, what do I do? Oh, yeah. I knew I'd have trouble with this. Next. Okay. Uh, one of the things we're most proud of, because we've wanted to have this for a very long time, and we hope that this will be of benefit to you is the report card that was completed and published. I think you've all seen this, I hope. And it's something that, it, you know, is not sort of meant to be digested in one sitting, but can be referred to and addresses many, many indicators and factors of children and family health in our county. And it brings together in one place many of the statistics, a lot of the data that, that is available, but is available in scattered locations. And, and I find this very useful. It's helpful to those of us that um, are looking to bring resources into the county through applications for federal projects or federal grants or even state grants. We're able to use this material. We're able to use it in talking on a regional basis to compare ourselves to, to our neighbors and to use it when we go to statewide meetings. This will be a project that will continue of the Children's Services Network and we hope to publish it every other year and update so that we will have a sort of a benchmark and can see how things have progressed or changed over the years. And you will always receive these. There are extra copies available at Health and Human Services if you would care to have some for any other uh, personal use that you have. And the report card, in addition to um, you know having statistics, also lists and identifies the kinds of things we talk about in our meetings, which is 
pro what are promising practices? What are good interventions? We know that we have limited resources. We want to use them wisely. We want to be good stewards. And so we make a big effort to bring training in on looking at what's been successful, what is research-based interventions, and we mention some of those in the report card as well as just looking at what the lay of the land is. Um, but another important activity for the network is to be a community advisory board or a collaborative advisory board for other initiatives that are taking place. There are many collaborative groups that come together to submit proposals, to carry out ideas, to dream up, or not dream up, but to design effective initiatives. And they need to refer back to a community collaborative or community advisory board to oversee that process. We act as that, that entity for any of these collaboratives in the county. Currently, just to give you an example of one that has, has and will continue to come before you, is a very large Safe Schools Healthy Student Grant. This is not something that was created by the Children's Services Network, but it was created by members of the network, and the network will then act as the advisory body for that. Um, proposal that's going. And these are other examples of, of programs that we've worked to develop. Another current one that's been submitted is for a home visitation uh, program that, it, that brings together all kinds of organizations, including family resource centers, county services, and other nonprofits to work with families most in need. Um, and to work really on prevention, which is uh, with first-time mothers under 25 years of age, so we can keep children healthy, safe, and out of our systems. The, um, this is sort of like the, the hall of uh, fame for uh, some of the esteemed members who attend, have attended the Children's Services Network. We do have people from all over the county, we have a 25-member uh, board of uh, steering council, and then we have a larger membership that participates on committees and in meetings, and we have a smaller governance group. <clears throat> One of the ways that I think that we will be, hope to be supportive and influential and helpful to the board is also included in our strategic plan. And, and that is that we would like to be able in addition to the network, to make recommendations and to evaluate things that are going on in our county and give you feedback about how, these rec how things that are going on affect children and families. We would like to have the opportunity to submit to you children and family impact statements that may touch on things that don't necessarily appear to be directly related, such as an immunization program. It may have to do with um, uh, something that's in land use or something that is within an environmental area. But as you know, we want to think globally and we want to be able to include that kind of thinking and those sorts of evaluation and analysis within the, all the work of the county. And so you can look forward, we hope, to um, receiving short and succinct and clear and very easy to read. Uh, children and family impact statements, we hope, from the Children's Services Network in the future, as well as receiving our report card. And, and finally, um, we also hope to, we plan, and it's part of our, um, our strategic plan, to make recommendations or to provide education around uh, strategic initiatives, around legislation or policy initiatives that can that can that affect children and families. So we hope to be a source of information and a source of support to the board as well as to the community and to engage in education and awareness activities. So we are um, thrilled that we had a few moments to speak to you. I would like everybody in the audience that's a member or has attended a Children's Services Network to please stand up so you can see our uh, strength of um, and it's Ray Chavez. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and as you see, we have a, a really wide variety of people from all over the county and from different kinds of organizations. So, 
thank you again for your time. And I'm, if you have any questions at all or comments, um, be happy to entertain them. And otherwise, I'll let you move on with your business. Questions and comments from board members? Okay, no one's leaning in. Karen, I, I, I can't help but be struck, first of all, by the, you know, your great attendance this morning. But as I look at your list here, um, uh, and I'm, this may just be a partial list of mm -hmm. uh, partners and attendees, um, a long history of uh, caring about <coughs> children and their conditions, among other things, in this county. And it makes me feel, uh, you know, feel secure in the fact that there are people out there that, that are, are paying attention to these issues and uh, that I would call more the experts, certainly more so than myself. So you are welcome at any time. And uh, speaking as a chair, we appreciate all that you're doing and your input because uh, um, I think for our part, um, the best way to know what's actually happening out there is talk to the people who are out there uh, on ground level doing that work and, and uh, taking care of folks. So. Thank you. What I want to leave you with is just the, to really impress upon you that lots of people go to meetings. The words like cooperation, collaboration get thrown around all the time. They're buzzwords now. They're in everything. But this is the real thing. That's what I want to leave you with. People are they're supporting it. They're coming. We're cooperating. We're talking. And we're working together. And it's, it'll help our county. So thank you. Thank you very much. And also thank you to all the partners that uh, took time uh, to come here this morning. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Appreciate all that you do. Okay. Shall we uh, move to consent, gentlemen? Have the consent calendar before you. Uh, move to approve consent calendar items 3 through 21. Okay. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Cast your votes, please. Okay, motion uh, consent calendar passes unanimously. We do have five minutes before our uh, 930 timed item. Would there be any advantage to going to closed session quickly? Is there anything we can solve? Sorry, I don't think we have anything. That's five minutes. No five minutes solvable item. Sorry. Well, um, I don't want to assume that uh, everyone's here for the 9.30 timed item unless they are. So those gentlemen, we could take five minutes. Five minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll start our 9:30 time to item right at 9:30. Well, every, every okay. We are going to move to item two: vacation of a portion of Avenue 332 east of the Front Current Canal. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fussell. Good morning, Board. Britt Fussell, Assistant Director for the Engineering Branch with the Resource Management Agency. And the item before you today is a request to uh, vacate a portion of Avenue 332 west of Road 212 and lying east and adjacent to the Friant Kern Canal, just south of the city of Woodlake. And the request is uh, being made by James and Clarissa Henderson who are the owners of the abutting property and would actually would benefit from the receipt of this abandoned right-of-way. Um, up on the screen is a location map. You see here is the city of Woodlake, road 212, which is also State Highway 245. And then we have Avenue 332 right here. The abandonment is, is this red area at the end. In a more detailed area, the, the Henderson parcel is this parcel right here that lies bounded by the St. John's River to the north, the Frank Kern Canal to the west, and ag land um, to the east. Here's an aerial photograph. The uh, subject parcel is this parcel right here. Uh, Frank Kern Canal, St. John's River, Wood Lake Airport, uh, Bravo Lake, and uh, Road 212, Avenue 332. And you can see from this aerial that the road is traveled, um, and you'll see in another slide, <laughs> 
that it, in its state um, it terminates here at the east boundary of the Henderson property. It does not exist on the ground to the west of, uh, of this parcel right here. So it exists on paper, but yes, not in actuality. Paper, right. okay. Thank you. And uh, here's a, a zoom in on that, and you can see that this is where the, the, the uh, road actually exists, where it's being traveled on today. Um, took some photographs in the field yesterday. This is standing about 300 feet east of the uh, property. I'm going to back up a couple slides here. If you, um, these are some uh, agricultural hothouses, which I'll point out in a minute to kind of give you your bearings on, on the next picture. Um, this is the, uh, the dirt road. It's basically dirt, 20 foot wide, coming into the property. And the travel way ends right here. The Henderson property is this right here behind the grapes. And these hot houses are what you were seeing in the aerial. Oh. This road heads straight back into to kind of give you your bearings. This is uh, standing at the same location, but looking back east towards road 212. And you can see it's um, in dirt, not paved. That is our county road. That is our county road, yes. Um, Don't tell grapes, everybody. Grapes to the north, uh, grazing land to the south. And then this is standing at the intersection of Road 212 looking west down Avenue 332. Um, the road was originally dedicated to the county by Woodlake Track Number 2 back in 1911, so it's almost 100 years ago. Um, the parcels in the area are zoned AE40, exclusive agricultural 40-acre minimum. The, in the area where it's being abandoned, which is only that segment at the, at the west end, does not exist on the ground. The road does not exist on the ground. None of this roadway that I just showed you pictures of is within the maintained mileage system for Tulare County. So there'll be no loss of state gas tax subvention as a result of this action. Um, we've concluded that the roadway is not necessary for present or prospective public use. However, there is a parcel that's directly south of the Henderson parcel that does derive access from this road. And in order to maintain that access, what we're going to do is actually shorten up the abandonment by 20 feet so it doesn't come all the way to his property line. That allows the parcel to the south to still have access to a public roadway, so we don't deny access to anybody. Um, again, some of the legal stuff, the, uh, taking these proceedings under the Streets and Highways Code, Section 8300. Uh, the petition was filed in accordance with the code. Public notice was mailed and posted and published in accordance with the code. We did um, a finding of general plan conformity and found that the, the uh, request would not create a problem with the general plan, and we're holding the public hearing today pursuant to 8324, Streets and Highways Code. Staff is recommending that the board hold the public hearing and then approve the vacation of Avenue 332 as it's described in your agenda item. And with that, I respond to any questions from the board. Questions for board members? No question. Um, on, the, on the unmaintained portion of the roadway that we're not vacating, does the county have any responsibility in terms of CMAC requirements of air quality issues when it's not a maintained part of our system? Yeah, the, the position that we've taken since it's not in the maintained system, we're not doing anything for dust control. We're dealing with the dust control issues out of Regulation 8 from the Air Quality District on the maintained system. We've been doing shoulder right. savings, et cetera, in order to... If that were privately owned property, then there would be some responsibilities by the property owner from their farming operation to, to do some dust control. I mean, it's almost like a no man's land, right. I guess. Right. I don't claim to be an expert on all the air quality. Okay. If there's no further questions, uh, staff would recommend you hold the public hearing. Okay, we will do. No further questions, then uh, this is a public hearing and uh, uh, I will now open that public hearing. Anybody wishing to wish to speak to the board about this item, now would be the time. Just come forward. We just need your name and address. Mike Sweeney, 21098 Avenue 328, Woodlake. Uh, I am the owner of the property south of the Hendersons' property there. Um, I have a lot of concerns about what this is going to do to me. This property has been in the family name for over 100 years, and in 1991, my father bought that three-acre parcel from my aunt, uh, and actually, uh, they when they when she bought the when he bought the property for her, they established the fence line that you've seen. I wish I had a real nice graphics to show you and everything, but he showed you the whole thing there anyway. And we uh, 
want to apologize to the county because we kind of considered that abandoned for a long time and utilized that as we had both sides of the property there. Uh, we leased the property from my aunts, which is now the Hendersons. And the, there's actually two gates there. There's the gate that borders the property line, and then there's another gate down about 50 feet uh, from that. And we use that to go down to our corrals and work our cattle on that side of uh, the fence. It was their understanding uh, when my father bought that from my aunt that that was the property line and uh, utilized the abandonment there. Uh, the problem with what I see here with a 20-foot easement into that property really decreases the value of my property. Going in there with a truck and trailer to make that corner in 20 feet is, uh, would be more than difficult to do. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Henderson utilizes more than 20 feet to access his property at this particular time. Uh, my concern is, is how uh, limited access would devalue my property there and increase his property. And I would think that, you know, the Board of Supervisors would look at that as, as how that would affect me versus how that would affect that property and the utilization of that. I would hope that you guys would, uh, consider giving me full easement to there as I've always had that uh, as a part of that property and utilize that for those reasons. Is, sir, if I could ask you, is that the only access to that property? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, I have a question. Yeah, question? Yes. Uh, I, short of the full, uh, I mean, you're saying 20 is not enough, but you obviously don't need the whole distance to make a turn. If the issue is turn on your property, does 30 well, feet give you enough? The, Does 40 it, feet give you enough? I mean, you're saying, I want, you didn't even realize there was a road there, and now you're saying you want the whole easement. But if it's only for purposes of accessing your property, what you need, and 20 foot's inadequate, what would be an adequate distance? Well, a minimum of 50 feet would, be, would need to be there. Because if you limit the access to the property, as a prospective buyer, if he was to sell that property, when you limit the access to the property, uh, to me, that would be valued. The property would be worth a lot less at that, you know. My question is, are we talking about the three-acre parcel? Yes. And actually, if you look at that, it, in the 20 feet, there's my pumps within 48 feet south of the property line and then 30 feet to the west. You know, it would it would be extremely cumbersome to get in there uh, with a twenty foot. Uh. As I look on this map, there's another. I think it's to the east. I'm not really good with that. So you don't own the property. All you own is that three acres. Is no, that what I you're saying? The, we own the my family. It's in an estate. My family owns the property east of that as well. East of that. Okay. And that is a separate parcel. That three acres is a separate parcel. I understand that, but there's no access to the three acres from that other property? Not, not, not legal access, because they're separate parcels. Okay. Asking a question. <laughs> Benefit of my legal knowledge. Yes. My other lawyer, as I like to refer to you. <laughs> I guess I have a question of counsel. Uh, if we were to today to make that instead of a 20 foot or 50 foot, uh, does that require re-noticing or can't, do we have that within our discretion to take that kind of action this morning? It's the purpose of the public hearing. I don't believe it requires re-noticing, although I have, that's the purpose of the public hearing. I don't believe it requires re-noticing, although I have just emailed my staff that question. Uh, the, um, the other issue is that um, Mr. Sweeney, Sweeney? Uh, raised a legal issue which does not appear from the agenda item and which I would prefer to discuss with your board in closed session. It's on for closed session discussion today. I'm just waiting as you're I no flipping. I, no I didn't questions. know if you had no, further I, I, questions. I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else wishing to speak to the board this morning? Come forward, give us your name and address. In regard to the 
Please come up. We just need your name and address for the record, sir. James Henderson, uh, 20810 Avenue 332 in Woodlake. It's in regard to the uh, this easement that you're uh, referring to today. Um, that easement, from what we understood, is that it was um, part of the Section 300 that is incurred up that is attached to Section 300, and uh, that e that's how that easement came about. And the 20 feet, 50 feet, it doesn't it um, doesn't matter as far as that goes. But I just want to let you know that that, from what we understand, Rich Dick Schaefer indicated to us that that 20 feet was part of the section 300 which is attached to the northern part of that property and not to the southern portion of that property if I, if I understand it correctly so just if there's any clarification on that Madam chair if I may clarify the road abandonment procedure cannot resolve a civil dispute between the property owners <coughs> as to where the, the land lines should appropriately be drawn <coughs> that's not really a matter that's before your board today Okay, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Council. Okay, anybody else? Okay, I guess I'm closing the public hearing. Bring it back to the board. And, uh, I'm sure I would motion to approve staff recommendation. Madam Chairman, uh, if uh, we could, before your board uh, takes action, I would like to discuss this with you in closed session. Okay. So be it. Mr. Cox, you'll have to wait a minute or two. This is item A on your board's closed session agenda. Peter keeps shutting off. <laughs> okay, are we all back? Uh, board's back in session. Uh, we did have a, a motion. Uh, was there a second to that? Okay, that motion dies for lack of a second. Is there another motion? <laughs> Madam Chairman, I, I would move to uh, uh, continue with this process and agree to the, uh, that would allow for the vacation of the property but would reserve the uh, 50 feet of the uh, uh, easternmost portion of this property that was to be vacated. Second. Sure that's the number you want? <laughs> Ask your votes, please. Okay. Thank you, board. Uh, I guess for the record, I'm supposed to say that vote was four to one. Okay. To our uh, untimed items. First item is uh, public comment. Anybody wishing to comment uh, to the board on items under their purview, but uh, not on the agenda. Now would be the time. Morning. Good morning. My name is Mary Morton. I'm a social worker uh, three in the foster family home licensing area. Of Mary, we just need an address for you, please. Yes, Tulare. I live in Tulare. Did you want the street address? We just need it for our record. 119 yes, South H Street in Tulare. Thank you. I've worked for the County of Tulare for eight years now. And I would like to let you know uh, how the low employee wages and high insurance costs affect the county and in employees in ways that you may not know. Uh, for one, in my small area, we have a social worker three position that has remained unfilled for oh, almost a year now. Uh, we're not able to fill it because the pay is not comparable to similar positions outside Tulare County. In fact, it's not even comparable to what social workers in child welfare services in Tulare County are earning. Our supervisor, uh, who supervises probably about 12 of her own brood, has had to take over that position which leaves her less time in supervising and performing her, her work. Um, since she wears a lot of hats, those that she does supervise uh, get less of her time and energy because she's pulled in so many different directions. I'd also like to point out that I perform a job that requires a four-year degree 
and I'm not able to make ends meet um, with the salary that I earn, especially since the insurance costs are so high. I find myself having to borrow money from a friend to make it in the last few days before getting paid. And I don't live extravagantly. Um, I live a very modest lifestyle, and I thought that I'd be able to support a modest lifestyle with my four-year degree and the position that I'm in. Um, I also know county employees who have to get payday advances. Um, that they have to pay high interest in, in order to make it from paycheck to paycheck. In the eight years that I've worked for the county, and I do love my job working with foster families, um, I have only increased my salary, my take-home salary, by less than $200. And that includes the last pay step. Um, people in other counties can support themselves with a job that requires a four-year degree, and they're not entry-level positions for people just starting out in their careers. Employees in Tulare County are struggling. We need your help to bring our pay up to what it takes to live in today's economy. We'd like to urge you to do the right thing and give us a fair wage increase and lower our insurance premiums to a reasonable rate. When you disrespect your county employees, those of us who make, provide the services and make the county run, you also disrespect all the fine citizens of Tulare County. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Morning. Good morning. My name is Blanca Flores. My address is 23509 Road 126 in Tulare. And I am a um, um, child welfare service social worker. And I do have three children, ages 16, 8, and 3. And I have to put them on my insurance uh, in order for them to have some kind of a health insurance because otherwise they would not qualify for a healthy family, so any other um, lower um, uh, fee in health insurance. And I am here because right now I am paying seven sixty-five a month to have my children insured. And I, yesterday when I was talking to my, one of my brothers that works in Kern County, he pays, he has the two, uh, he's covered 100% with the 250 deductible and where his co-pays are $10. And his wife who works for Butte County, she pays $70 to have herself and her children insured and her, co um, her uh, deductible is uh, zero and her co-pays are $10. My one of uh, my sister who works for Walmart, her um, health insurance for the whole entire family, including her children and spouse, she pays one hundred and twenty dollars a month, with the zero deductible and twenty dollar copays. And right now, um, I am with the two income home family. We have two incomes, my spouse and myself, and he is uninsured because if I was to put him onto the county insurance with me. I would have no money left, and even if we came down to a one-income family, in order for my children to see if they would qualify for healthy families, even then we would not qualify for healthy families. And it's what's ruining a lot of the families who are working for the county, a lot of single parents, and even two-income families is the low wages that we have been receiving and also the high health insurance uh, premiums that we, ha we have to pay because if I have to pay a thousand dollar deductible with the seven hundred and sixty five a month premium and then on top of that a forty dollar copay, everything all of my money is going straight into uh, back into the health insurance and with little money to take home. So I ask of you to look into your hearts and hopefully find a way that um, us working people can um, like my coworker has talked to you previous, so we can continue to live in this county and serve the people that are so important to us in order, uh, and also who um, depend on you and us to help them. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Anybody else wishing to uh, comment during public comment this morning? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Tafty. Um, I was here last week requesting some documentation from County Council and also the code compliance. And um, neither to say I have received anything, but I must have caught the plague when I was standing at this uh, podium last week because I can't even get my calls returned. I can't even get past the uh, switchboard. And I've been trying to get to see Mr. Hash. I see he is here today, so um, I'll try to get an appointment to see him. But again, please uh, keep in mind, and this is something that's been going on against my properties and code compliance for 10 years. And I plan on bringing it to a conclusion this year. So let's see what's going on with the department. It's funny to me that I can go in a court of law and get a judge dismissed uh, from hearing my case, but I cannot dismiss a um, inspector that has had a vendetta with me for over 10 years dismissed from my, hear my cases or actually working on my cases. Um, I appreciate it if you were to get involved and let's resolve this thing. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I apologize to Mr. Tafty. Um, delay in getting a response to him was a staff miscommunication in my office. It's been resolved. A letter will go out to him today. Thank you. Okay. And I'll work with Mr. Hash right now, see if I can get to see him. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right. The uh, last item is Board of Supervisors matters. Supervisor Ennis? Yes. Uh, tonight we'll be having a meeting at uh, Porterville City Hall on Success Dam. Um, Colonel Chapman and Paul Zanano have come down from uh, Sacramento and they're touring the area right now as we speak. And then this evening at six o'clock we'll be having a meeting and hopefully determining which uh, plan they're gonna use to repair the dam so that we can also get the dam repaired and also make the pool larger for the future. So that's what's coming up tonight. Okay, thank you, Supervisor Sheeta. Yesterday morning, I went to the fire headquarters for this hidden fire, which is located at Find uh, it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> located at uh, Horseshoe Okay, I'm not laughing Brown. because you said it before I did, because I was thinking how hidden was it. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Sheeta. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, the report was very positive. By today, they should have a line completely around the uh, fire in their safety zone. And they'll be lighting fires to, uh, to yeah, the back burn. The problem they've had is the humidity and the temperatures weren't cooperative. But overall, it's been a, a relatively low intensity fire. So there's not a lot of uh, damage as we would have in high intensity fires. So uh, everything's worked very well. And probably starting tomorrow morning, you'll, you'll see crews starting to leave uh, this fire. So that's all I have. Thank you, Supervisor Worthley. Uh, today. No, nothing today. <laughs> <laughs> You've already said what you had to say this morning, Supervisor Cox. Just real brief, we've been working with staff on planning an event here in Visalia for the Allensworth uh, Centennial Commemoration event. That will be Friday, October 10th at the library downtown here in Visalia. Been working with uh, with our staff, sheriff's department, police department, other agencies, uh, appears to be move, moving along very well. We do have a contingency backup plan in case of rain, which would be across the street at the First Presbyterian Church. And uh, make sure everyone's aware they're all invited. We've chose a caterer uh, today to provide the food for the event. And uh, pl the planning for this event is just about done looks to be very uh, exciting event with several state legislators uh, being invited several of them uh, have already RSVP that they will attend so uh, it looks to be a very good event we have a gentleman coming from Washington DC from the Smithsonian am I still in your thunder madam chair no I just appreciate the fact that you've stepped in and taken over from the project that I started because uh, <laughs> I'm busy on baby watch so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> supervisor Cox we're serving milk <laughs> <laughs> no comment. You guys are not funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Supervisor Cox, I'll I didn't mean to cut you that. off. <laughs> You're done with that? 
Okay, the uh, only thing I can think of other than my constant fixation with a grandbaby on the way is uh, uh, tomorrow we'll, uh, in Tulare they will be honoring uh, uh, Mr. Jeff Fabre, and some of you may have seen the resolution as you signed it. Uh, he is an Olympic bronze medal winner in the Paralympics, and he is the archer that has, uh, has had a lot of success with that, and he will be, uh, uh, be a little presentation uh, at uh, Wilson uh, Grammar School which is where Supervisor Conway went to kindergarten just a few years ago. Uh, anyway, he's going to do a demonstration. I'm looking forward to that. Is that historic structure? So, yes, that's uh, I told you I'm delirious on baby watch. So, uh, <laughs> so I temporarily forgot how old I actually am. Uh, Mr. Rousseau, you have anything to add? Not at this time. Thank you. Hey, okay, Council, do we need to go back to uh, closed session? We do, Madam Chair. You've already... Uh, and in on item A, you have items B through D on your board's closed session agenda. I do not anticipate announcements. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here with us this morning.